What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Let's Play House of Friends Sim for the third time. My third playthrough of House of Friends Sim, in which instead of sending photos to a friend or playing by myself, I'm making a commentary YouTube series out of it. Because honestly, this is far in now to quit. You know, that's just how it is. Uh, disclaimer possible spoilers for Homestuck proper. This game, Pester Quest, Homestuck fanfics that I've read and forgot were fanfics. Uh, Pretty much anything homesick related you can think of, probably, except for Homesick 2 and the epilogues, because those are fan I haven't read. Um, my normal disclaimer, character voices may be inconsistent, pronunciations may be inconsistent, I'll do my best, but as we saw last time, sometimes your best isn't good enough. Uh, today I believe is Conyol's route, so let's do some murder. Woo, murder time. <laughs> Ever since you were a kid back on Earth, you have always held the deep, close wish to one day travel the world. Places. I opened a second. I have spot. Damn it. See new places, experience exciting new tastes in altitudes and temperatures. Maybe go scuba diving. Imagine you would actually get the chance. That kind of cool stuff didn't happen to someone like you. Well, you're finally getting your wish. It's uh, just a totally different world. Funny how life turns out. Earth, well, you don't want to think about that. We'll find out in the sequel series. Who knows if it will ever even happen. It will in the sequel series. You've really chilled out recently, found your place in the universe. Drifting from friend to friend, adventure to adventure. It's the only way to live. It's Connell. Con- Con- Connell. Connell. Conyol. Conyol. Or Conyol or Conyol. Right now, your travels appears to be a normal road in an innocuous part of town. Not particularly upscale, but not exactly rat tra a rat trap either, just pretty average. <laughs> there she is! I love her. I think she's great. She would probably kill me if someone asked her to, but that's fine. She's just doing her best with what she has. A row of- I also can't wait to hear her actual theme in High Swap 2. Homestuck like team, please, can we have High Swap back too? Please? A row of those spiky purple bushes line the Stands a large, fierce troll girl who is glancing furiously up and down the street. Okay. That's a less average. Hey, are you her? Huh? I mean, are you her? Are you one? You want to be here for? Hmm. Well, your first instinct is definitely to tell her that yes, of course you are who she's waiting for, provided she's waiting for a new friend. But honestly, you aren't sure your stick is gonna work on this girl. Of course, that's not what I was thinking. Ugh. Ugh. This is so infuriating. She's so late. I'm so bored. You think she's coming soon? You don't know who she means, but you suggest that she might be more comfortable waiting somewhere that isn't in that spiky, spiky purple shrub? Don't be stupid. My clients value discretion. I have to lay low. What voice is this? It's happening. My teeth hurt. <laughs> I've been pressing them together when I talk, so it makes my teeth buzz. <laughs> Sorry, something unrelated is happening. The shrub hardly manages to cover her, and standing behind it and shouting is definitely not making her less conspicuous. Neither is asking random passerby whether they're her client. Uh, not that you can tell. Asking people left and right is asking them to be your friend is kind of your whole deal. <sighs> If you aren't a country lady 453, four, then who is? Country lady 453. Hmm. That almost sounds like. I have to remember. <laughs> I forgot she was in this route. There she is! Sorry I'm late. I couldn't. What in tarnation? You'd know that genteel charm anywhere! <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh, her 
that I've been in a while and I've been thinking about Claire all day. I had a day at work, y'all. I have a calc midterm tonight. This is an interesting episode. Well, my stars. I definitely wasn't expecting to see you around here. What a masterful coincidence. You are. Lady too, all unkidnapped and everything. You smile a hug, which she enthusiastically returns. She nearly picks you off your feet. Lady shoves her nose against your neck and gives you a few sloppy licks. Who the heck are you? Is it this bush? Or you find your own? Sorry, but I'm the business your bush has been looking for. Wait. What? Your country. Sorry. The name's Skylar Cor- Skylar Corga. Pleasure to meet you. <sighs> I didn't think you'd be a bronze. I've gotten that before, honestly. It's hard out here for a low blood. Also, by the by, this concerns them too. She puts a hand on your shoulder. It does? It does? Sure enough. They were there when it happened. They were hitting. How many? They even helped me with part of the farm. It's Right, yeah, you said something about that in your message. But I don't get it. What do you want me to do? Right, well, the bandits didn't get lady. But other kids haven't been so lucky. Lobos have been hit especially hard. That's not her voice, but we're rolling with it. I want you to find the bandits' base of operations, and I want you to take them out. Permanently. And pay. Kondo's mouth moves silently, like she's trying to reason through the steps of Skylar's conversation. Then she catches up. A slow grin spreads over her face. Yeah. Yeah, I look painful. And permanent. But wait. You want me to get revenge for someone else's loses? A few of us got together and decided to do something about it ourselves. Since there's no hope of the heiress of the drones doing anything to stop the bandits. And they all looked at me as spokes troll, seems how I'm the oldest and the least easily shook. Okay, sure. I guess that why isn't it important. How much you got? How much are you willing to throw down? I doubt any little one's gonna afford my fees. Let alone a bunch of country rusties. <laughs> I don't know why that <laughs> Anyway. Lady starts to growl, and Skyla puts a pacifying hand on her head. Everything's fine, lady. We expected this, didn't we? We were hoping you were willing to do it out of the goodness of your blood pusher. Kanye laughs so hard that she spits. Skyla winces. Her teeth are so cute. Just saying. <laughs> you got a pan disorder? Got that symptom syndrome? If you think I take any cherry cases. I don't work for pretty smiles. Keep your compliments to yourself, Missy. That wasn't. Uh, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Why don't you just go? Why don't you just go find the bandits yourself? You know full well I don't have the means, but you do. It'll be a walk in the recreation field for you. If you weren't so nasty and selfish, or well, maybe you're scared. Uh, you. I'll show you scared. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Oh, that's rude. Oh, hell. They look like they're about to throw down. You gotta do something to defuse the situation. I wanna say it's Ask Kanyal if she works on spec. Uh, what? I don't work on spec. I'm only licensed on Alternia. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't have a license. You explained to Kondo that working on spec means doing some work for free in the hopes that you are going to be paid later. You see, it's unlikely that the bandits only go after Lucy. That would be totally ridiculous when there's so many other things in the world to steal. Like, money? They probably have just heaps of money in their hideout, and if she breaks in, she can have it all. Skyla doesn't want it, she just wants to stay with Lucy. You are so dang convincing that you almost convince yourself. I'm not so sure. Sounds like you might be trying to fuck me over. Is this... Give me a moment. It'll be about a second for you. But... Give me a moment. I was wrong. Let's go back. 
I think. Let me see again, actually. Yes, okay. So, we'll get back to asking Condal if she works on spec, because the actual bed ending is simple. You mentioned that you are important. A real mover and shaker in the Alternian economy. You have a bunch of amazing local friends. Some of them are rich, have giant internet followings, or are just very, very enthusiastic about meat. The point is, you know people. Wow, this for the generous of you. you Levish your relationships for my sake? I know didn't make a mistake trusting you. Well, it's a different story, I guess. Why don't you call both your fancy friends? You don't have a phone, bitch! <laughs> Whoops. Gonna get it wrecked. Her horns. Wait a second. Wait a second. Alert the press. Her horns look like tiny dogs! <laughs> it's a shadow! It's like a little dog! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's go back to. I don't know if she works on spec. Okay. Okay, I messed that up, so we're gonna ask her if she works on- We're gonna ask Condale if she works on spec again! Yes. Where were we? Just kidding, I don't have a license. I should have saved. Oh well. Oh, okay. You let- here's where we were, I remember now. You let out a scandalized gasp to convey just what an untoward accusation that is. You are shocked. Shocked. Ugh. Fine. I need to get away from this stupid bush. Wee. She kicks the prickly purple shrub so hard it uproots and sails across the street to land on the hood of someone's car. I'm gonna hold you to that. If there's money, then I'll hold you tighter. And squeeze. Till your weirdly colored eyes pop out. Yikes. You believe it, too. You could definitely do that. But here's your chance! You've got tons of success stories proving that forced exposure is really the best way to get people to like you. It's just peachy. When do we leave? The bush is back! <laughs> Kanyo kicks at another bush. She seems to have an anger management problem. Well, I guess she is managing it. She's taking it on the shrubbery instead of you or Skyla. We aren't anything. You aren't coming. Lady starts growling again, and Skyla looks like she wants to join in. I'm gay. We've established this before. Uh had some gay thoughts for a second there. Continue. Excuse me? Kano gets up in her face, moving way faster than someone of her size seems like she should be able to. You aren't coming. You'll just get in my way. You're distracting. <laughs> Moon! <laughs> Skyla's mouth twitches just the tiniest bit. That is not what I meant. You keep tricking me! I just meant you'll probably stop to say some bark beast wrigglers and get us all cold. Skyla crosses her arm and tosses her. Sorry, they had to have known what they were doing when they wrote that line. Anyway, uh, fine. I'm counting on you two. Cotton, you lose here! Only one on the screen. You figure out that the information gathering stage of this oper of the operation is next. You've seen heist movies. You know how shit works. This is the heist fully. But Kondo just shouts at someone on her file and then punches some coordinates into a car that you're pretty sure isn't hers. It takes you to the outskirts of the city, past long stretches of cracked concrete and urban sprawl. Not exactly the place you'd find bandits who steal farm animals. You point that out to Kondo. She tells you to shut up. So you do. Sorry again for the audio jumps in this one. Uh, I have class in about 50 minutes, so we were talking. 
but that's how the, the episode will get done. Anyways, you leave the car and walk the last few blocks. The bandit's operation is honestly not super impressive. It's a long industrial structure that looks more like a manufacturing plant than a den of thieves. Beside it is something much more impressive. A sleek black spacecraft. Not like yours. This is the Mercedes Benz to your banged up Chevy Malibu. I wish you knew what cars were. Before you crash landed it, that thing was a hunk of junk. Oh, holy shit. Is that, is that an adult? What, the ship? No dingus. You follow her frenzied gaze and... Right. The troll beside the ship is taller than anyone else you've seen here. Her skin a darker gray, her claws incredibly long. If everyone you've met so far has been a kid... Wow. They all deal with stuff that even adults on your planet don't. Routine death, dismemberment, and like four different relationship dynamics. If there are really no trolls, mature trolls here, then where are they? Wait, hold up. You're saying where you're from you live with adults? Um, yeah? Planet? Sure do. Huh, <laughs> well, maybe you're tougher than you look. Adults are terrifying. Come on, let's get closer. You and Kanyo sidle up close enough to the trolls to overhear them haggling over stolen goods. So far, the conversation is too general to tell if they need the loose eye. Damn, they must have gloves of steel. Talking back to an adult. I mean, I am great at rushing in without giving any thought. But I'm not a total moron. The trolls, two trolls, appear to come to an agreement. They shake hands and head back into the warehouse together. So what do you think? What should we do? Huh? <laughs> you? Kanyo's the expert here. You yeah, no shit. I'm also good at slashing. But Asdigit always does the thinking. And the planning. He's the one with the eye beams and the big think pan. Don't tell him I said that. Please. You assure her you couldn't tell Asdigit anything at all. Because you don't know who he is. Oh. Right. As your frustrating bulge board loser, who sucks so bad. Also, he's my mate's friend, and we've been together for sweeps. He was supposed to be here, but he's all busy doing some dumb bullshit. So I need you to be the pans of the operation, okay? Please, do this for me. Oh dear. We're gonna search the spaceship and make terrible decisions! Here's your chance to prove that you are totally capable of making non-disastrous choices. I'm doing shit with my hands. Also, what's up y'all, it's 413 on the west coast. The reason it would be the best to check out the spaceship, that space cruiser while it's empty. No, start over. The reason it would probably be best to check out this, that space cruiser while it's empty, since who knows how many people will be waiting for you in the warehouse. Yeah, that works for me. You suspect that Kanye would have agreed to anything you suggested, as long as she didn't have to make the scissor herself. What a mood. As the kids say these days, big worm. Tough decisions in your life recently. You worried that the spaceship will be locked and your great plan is going to be over before it begins, but the, glorse, the door glides open easily and silently. Oh, the bugs. Everything the trolls use is bug-shaped. Kanyo leads the way, and you let her. You don't know what wild security measures a troll ship has, but you do know that you don't want to find out. The inside is normal enough. A pilot's and co pilot seat, a central panel covered in more of the squiggly Alternian language, and a bank of sleeping screens. Other than that, it is remarkably bare of any homey touches. Not like your ship, which, in your humble opinion, is very nicely decorated. It's got some pretty dope posters on your wall. More to the point, there is absolutely nothing of value here. Kanyo can tell also. Ugh! There's no point to being here. This is just a cruiser. All the good stuff is definitely going to be inside the warehouse. Okay. Fair. You have no idea what you're doing, and you are sick of pretending you do. You wish you could just take a breather, honestly. I didn't plan that. The strange, compulsive desire for more friendship is still there. You are pretty exhausted. Let's just... Fuck! Oh, wow! That's kind of forward, Kanyo! You weren't even at the friendship stage yet! Oh, calm down, you gigantic 
This, there, this adult troll, we are definitely going to die. That's why I said the fuck word. Oh. Oh! Fuck, that is a big troll. Kanye is pretty big. She's the biggest troll you've met so far. If someone fed you truth serum and put a gun to your head, you might even describe her as thick. This troll is fucking terrifying. And she looks pissed. Or maybe that's just how her face always looks. There are teeth. Lots of teeth. Don't mind me. Who told you you two could be in here? I didn't order any ugly regulars. Who are you calling ugly? Kamiel immediately slaps a claw ga clawed gauntlet over her mouth, apparently remembering who she is shouting at. The adult troll growls, and you don't mean she sounds ang and you don't mean she sounds angry. It's not a husky, sexy metaphor. She fuck really fucking growls a deep, guttural animal noise. Staring into a pair of merciless cobalt eyes, you experience a pulse of crystalline fear. Blank and cold. You are pretty much constantly braced for death. That doesn't mean you're looking forward to it. Instead of springing forward and rending you to pieces, the adult troll just stares at you. Damn, adult monster troll. Take a picture. It'll last longer. The last thing you remember is those blazing eyes. Then even that fades and you slip away. <laughs> when you thrash back into consciousness, Kanyal is right on top of you, pinning to the warm, throwing metal of the spaceship wall. She doesn't look angry or scared or anything. Her snarling, expressive face is utterly blank. You say her name a couple of times, but she doesn't twitch. She just squeezes down harder, grinding the bones of your wrists together. Someone is swearing. Oh fuck. You strain to see around Kanyal's head. The adult troll is seated at the pilot seat and the console is lit up. You realize what the thrumming in the walls means. The ship is moving. You see the sickly green-gray of the Alternian night sky and your stomach is a disorienting lip leap of mingled elation and dread. You can't believe you're actually going to space and finally heading somewhere besides this fucking hellhole of a planet! Of course, that's how you felt when you were first leaving Earth. And you have no idea where this troll is bringing you, and your new prospective friend is just sitting here like she's hypnotized. She only relaxes when you struggle, and then only just slam you back against the wall. You just <laughs> randomly fell asleep, didn't you? How the heck did that happen? The adult troll starts talking again, but she isn't talking to you. No, I'm on my way. No more delays, I promise. The Lucy shipment's on schedule. No, don't worry. Everything is... Sirens scream and... Greens flash. The ship bucks wild like a sailboat hit by a wave. The adult troll's fingers fly over the consoles. No, what the hell? I don't know. It's like I've lost all control of the damn thing. Fuck. <laughs> Kyle's just a teenager. <laughs> ah, it's time for your weekly break. Time for the weekly breakdown about <laughs> turning it. And the fact that they're all babies! Kondal's grip, grip on you loosens. She pulls away and shakes her head back and forth, shaggy hair flopping into her eyes. What? What the hell? Where are we? She took. She sounds small and lost. The adult troll doesn't turn around. She's too busy yelling a mayday into her calm when trying to wrest back control of her ship. The whole thing shudders again, and yours and Kondal's heads bonk together. Ow! The ship bucks again. It feels less like the engine failure. It feels less like engine failure, and more like a gigantic baby is shaking it like a rattle. And you're scared, sure. But you're also washed in a sudden and unexpected flare of understanding and competency. Uh, because this isn't the first time this has happened to you. This is exactly how you crash land in Alternia in the first place. You were just passing by, minding your own damn space business. When your ship decided it wanted nothing better than to just snap its reins, toss its wild head, and head straight for the unfamiliar planet below you. You push yourself to your feet, trying to tame your nausea as the ship rolls. You grab Kanyal's hand and pull her across the compartment to a glowing green sigil on the wall. You don't know much, but you do know absconding when everything starts falling to shit. Hey, what are you- Oh, let go of me! Absolutely not. If you do, if you do that, you will not be able to be friends with her, because she'll be dead. 
With a strength born of desperation, you pull her into the escape pod with you. Ugh! We won't fit! You will. You do. But <laughs> it's uncomfortable as hell. Craning your neck at a very uncomfortable angle, you manage to reach around Conyol and press the big red button on the wall. An alarm sounds, and you hear the adult say, What the? before the door slams shut and the escape pod rockets out into space. You shudder back toward Alternia, Conyol's weight crushing your delicate ribcage. Poor ribcage. You're surprised I hasn't sued you for damages yet. Wow, that sure was a shit show. Hardships bring people together, don't they? It's death a thing. Unfortunately, you judge from Conyol's swearing and muttered death threats, but this is not one of those times. She go brrrr. Game over. Cause she fucking kills you. Let's get that good ending. This one's full of murder and blood. There's the warning on the front, I'll but again, there's a lot of blood. I think this one does the, con the highest concentration of blood colors on the screen. So let's follow the pirate into the warehouse. You decided to follow them into the warehouse. That way, at least you won't be trapped in a confined space if anyone comes out to check on the, fit, on the ship. You get ready to do some James Bond ass shit. Ducky behind corner. You really do gymnastics. You aren't healing from broken ribs. But fantasy James Bond sure can. Kondo doesn't bother with any of that. She just stops down the hallway towards the first door. Damn. She really hadn't been joking when she said she was into the more straightforward approach. You pick up speed to try get to the door. Try to get to the door before she does, just to prevent her from charging in there and getting you both caught immediately. Good thing too. Through the window in the door, you see what looks like some kind of break room. A couple of trolls are messing around on their palm husks, and a few more are sitting at a table and playing some kind of game that involves cards, dice, and little colorful shells. Come on, you can take them. Ugh. I forgot you were my partner, you're just dead weight. No real argument there. Believe me told me that most pros work together for a reason. It's much harder on your own. You wonder if Kanya would have been so hot to take the job if it hadn't been for Skyla's, uh... Vibes. Yeah, that's the word. Vibing. On the bisexual... Uh... What's it called? Frequency. You have to do this. You have to rally. Conyol is already losing faith in you. Or maybe she had no faith in you in the first place. Whatever. You choose a different door at random and go down it, assuring Conyol that you definitely know what the fuck you are doing. What? Ugh, where are you going? You've been down this road before with Demian and your meat quest through the sewers. This is possibly slightly higher stakes, but the same basic principle applies. Fake it till you make it. Conyol gets annoyed much faster than your other friend are anything to go by. Damn, you'll need to step up your game. You think back on all the heist infiltration movies you've seen. Hmm. Maybe you can find a locker room or a troll laundry room and find one of those SWAT slash hazmat suits. Yeah, that would be the best plan. Just put on a disguise and wander around like a sneaky fuck and oh god damn it. Sorry, I just realized. Among Us. Hashtag Among Us has been homestuck the whole time. <laughs> anyway, you are so busy focusing on your brilliant plan that you open a door without thinking and find yourself looking at the trolls playing the card game. Somehow, in your random quest through the warehouse, you manage to double back on yourself and come out the on the other come out on the other side of the break room. Classic. This is classic. You. You're almost by yourself. Almost. There's a frozen moment when all of the it's just stare at you and Conyol, perhaps taking in the truly staggering idiot level you have achieved. Thank fuck. We should have just done this from the beginning. <laughs> You've gotten into quite a few fights since arriving on this planet. Well, mostly you stood around while well, other people fought. But the point is, Conyol, she is brutal. She takes out almost the same number of bandits that you. Multicolored blood flies. And god, you know these are bad guys. They've been stealing Lucy and selling them. Which sucks. But right now, they're kind of just a, a bunch of kids getting massacred. 
you don't, you, you don't feel great about it? In fact, uh, you think you might need to sit down for a little bit. Oh, there's some teal too. Your back hits the wall and you slide down to the dirty floor. You are clammy all over. <laughs> Pathetic. Kanya pulls her gauntlet out of the final troll's neck with a spray of yellow blood and a squelch that makes your stomach roll. She notices you on the ground. What are you? Ugh! Are you serious? Come on! You try to tell her that she volunteered you for this mission herself, but you can't slow your breathing enough to get the words out. You aren't sure why now is the time you finally freak out. Maybe it's the close quarters. Or maybe you've been on Alternia long enough for this multicolored mess to finally start registering as... Maybe you've reached your horror saturation point. Whatever. If you've learned anything from this experience, it's that the why of things doesn't actually matter. Kanya looms over you, raising a gauntlet. She's gonna kill you. At least if you're dead. You can't puke on yourself. But instead of brutal stabbing, you feel a steady on the back of your neck. Kanya pushes your head down until it's between your knees. She kicks the word breasts eat. You follow her instructions, too lightheaded to dwell on the absurdity of being coached through a panic attack by a girl who just murdered, like, ten dudes. She's surprisingly good at this. Heh. <laughs> Dodger freaked out his first fight, too. It wasn't even bloody. And <laughs> little regular passed out! I guess some blood cats really are better built for violence. She sits down beside you and pats you on the back. You kind of wish she'd taken the bloody gauntlet off first, but you appreciate the gesture. You are having a hard time reconciling this conmule with the one who would snarl at Skyla for being too nice. I'm multifaceted. Also, fuck her. Which reminds me. She pulls her phone out of her pocket, smearing a little all the blood across the screen. Cory got got your bandits. She talks a lot louder on the phone than she does in real life. Yeah, no shit. Of course I work fast. Especially when I don't have anyone to slow me down with a bunch of tactics and plans. Ugh. Save it for your chrismasis. She hands up and glares at the phone. You tell her. She really seems to hate Skyla. Connell's face goes a fierce shade of green. Don't be stupid. You barely know her. You don't press the issue. You also don't point out the kind of obvious point that these are probably aren't the only trolls in the facility, the one who had been haggling with the adult, isn't here, for instance. But if Kanyo forgetting about them means less murder, you're all about it. There's no way the bandits are continuing their work after this. Kanyo also seems to have forgotten about them. Looking to be paid. Nope, she's loading the bodies. Great. It takes way longer in my life than it is in video games. Video games lying to us once again. In the end, she ends up with five palm husks, a laptop, some jewelry, and some little squares of plastic that you think might be sci-fi credit cards. <laughs> Whatever. There's probably anything here. But that fight made it pretty worth it. Well, I'm glad it was cool. At least. You were just trying not to think about it. Maybe get as fast as possible. Whatever con you want to do with your outstanding debt at that <laughs> Well, you could square up out there. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'm not actually going to squeeze you. It would just be too easy. Like squishing a march bug. Fuck yes. Saved by being pitiful. I doubt you have any money anyway. I mean, you are wearing an abolition robe. True. Kanye helps you to your feet. Even you kind of want to ask if you're friends now, even though the only bonding activity you've done together is combined murdering and comforting, with her doing both of those things, and you standing there like a dumbass. But really, you've made friends with worse people. For worse reasons. Oh. Here. Why don't you take one of these? She hands you one of the palm husks. Thankfully, it only has a little bit of blood on it. Actually, it might be mustard. Like, the actual condiment? But... She's giving you a phone? Why? You don't have one, right? <laughs> I mean, you don't even have any pants. This way we keep in touch. And you can tell me if you have any more jobs with an excellent violence level. Like this one. Like this one. Let's here. Let's exchange info. Palm husks are really useful. 
You can use it to call people in everything. <laughs> you weren't sure if she's making a joke. Uh, possibly. She just thinks you're an idiot. That's okay. You can deal with that. Don't mind me taking a lot of drinks this episode. Because not only did you make a friend today, you got a gift today. Holy shit, you killed it! <laughs> that looks a lot like blood in this reader, no! But yay! That was Kanyo's route, we got to watch some murder, I think we're done with the blood warnings for a couple episodes. Uh, I do really like Kanyo. I think she's sweet. She's not, but you know what I mean. It's not just Maybe it's a little bit because I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, uh, she's great. We got a victory, did some murder. We got a phone now, so we're going to be able to learn how to read soon. Um, next week, I believe, is Chixie and Tizeus. So, one of the best weeks. I love them very much. And I have class in half an hour and a midterm tonight. And I'm running out of things to say. So bye, y'all, and I'll see you in the next episode.